Hey guys, this is Alex from Wilkinson Audio. In this video, I'm going to show you how to export Reaper projects in a few different ways. Uh, so the first method we're going to look at is the save as method for exporting your project in the current state it's in to another Reaper user. Um, so this method uh, will include all of your takes and lanes and pretty much all of the uh, information you recorded throughout the project. It's going to maintain the structure of um, the entire project, all the panning, all the volume levels. Uh, and, it, and it's going to maintain all your effect settings. Uh, one thing to look out for is if, um, say you have something like a synthesizer like this, and they don't have whatever synth plugin you're using, they won't have any audio for that. They'll just have the MIDI, uh, MIDI item uh, information there. So uh, it's a good plan before you do this to right click and go apply track take effects to items as new take. And then whoever you send it to has the synthesizer you used on it and the uh, raw MIDI data both uh, available to them. Anyway, so that's just something to be wary of. Um, so how we do this method is we just go, it's pretty simple. We just go file, save project as, and then you just want to tick off copy all media into project directory. And then we're just going to save that into a different folder. And we're going to save it with a different name here. And then all we have to do is hit save. And then that saves it out. And as you can see, it's already loaded the new project. So you can tell it's completely identical to the one that we just uh, exported. And if we go into this folder, another nice thing is we can see uh, I have an impulse response in Reverb loaded here. So if you used an impulse response for Guitar Cab or something like that, I don't know if every plugin will do this, but Reverb will do this. Uh, it'll actually include your impulses that uh, the project uses for you uh, in the export. So that's a pretty awesome feature of that type of export. Okay, let me just load the original project again here. Okay, so the next uh, way uh, of exporting that we're going to look at is the render stems method. And uh, this method is useful for uh, different reasons. Uh, this method ap applies all of the effects to the audio before sending it out. So when you'd want to use this is say you've, you've conducted something using, um, using uh, some kind of orchestral plugin or something like that for say a movie or something like that, and you just want to send them all of the tracks for that. Um, with all, you know, and if and if you didn't do that method, you just send the MIDI data, which isn't very useful to them. We actually want these to have um, to be audio instead of just MIDI data. So this will take um, all of our track effects, apply it to the items first, and then export it. So to do this method, we just go file, render, and then up in the render uh, drop down, we just want to click uh, master mix plus stems, and then I'll show you something here we can do. Um, we can actually use wildcards to determine the structure of our files and their names. So I like to do, uh, first I like to do, I think it's just uh, track number. And then, uh, then when they import it, they'll get it uh, imported in the same order that our tracks were in in the project, which is usually beneficial. So you do track number, and then we'll do uh, just track, and that will give the track name. So this will be called 00 master 01 bus. Uh, 0, 2, 1, 0, 3, 2. Uh, kind of confusing, but uh, when, you, when you import it into a, a project, you'll understand why this is useful. Um, the other thing Render Stems does, it keeps all our panning and all that stuff, um, unless you export mono files, so make sure you keep them stereo if you want to keep all your panning information stuff uh, baked into the files you're exporting, which if you're doing, like, again, if you're doing like some kind of um, orchestral instrument, that's what you would definitely want. And then we're just going to browse for directory. Uh, we'll look for our render stems directory, create whatever directory we want, and then we're just going to hit uh, render. You'll notice it, has, it says render two files here. Um, render stems, you have to select all the files that you actually want. So right now it says render two files. It's talking about this file that's selected, and it's talking about the master, which it always renders. So if we select everything with Apple A, or you know whatever you do on your Windows computer, uh, you'll see it says render seven files, which is what we want. We want all the files. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the master set seven files. And then we'll just go render, and it'll export all of those for us. Uh, you'll notice that we'll load that project up here too. Well, there's no actual project file with it, so we'll just go file, new project tab, and we'll just uh, import all of these here. And you can see the ordering here as I, as I said 0001 and then it, and then when we import it here to separate tracks it's in order the same way we had it before you'll notice that our bus track is rendered out and our track one has disappeared but if you actually look at our project um, one is very quiet it's negative 40 db 
So that's been applied, and it's actually still here. It's just really quiet. So if we normalize that information, I, uh, it's still there. It's just that uh, it's applied our volume effects to the item before uh, rendering it out, which is what we predicted, so that's good. Our synthesizer has been rendered out. Our MIDI info has not been rendered out. It's just a blank channel, um, so that's not good for us. Uh, again, also our impulse response thing is just a blank channel. Any track that you select that has nothing on it, it's just rendered out as a blank, uh, just a blank uh, file. So um, with our synth information, what we want to do, if we want to include this information and we, we're, do, we're rendering out this way, we want to go file, uh, export project MIDI, and then uh, for, you know, just follow these options accordingly. Uh, entire project, consolidate MIDI items, select the tracks only, just do all or whatever. And then you can merge them to a single MIDI track or a multi-track MIDI file. You can play around with that if you want to. Embed your tempo map, which is often a good idea. Uh, so when people import the project, they get the tempo of it as well. And we'll just browse for the same folder here we were working on, render stems, and we'll save it as MIDI info. And then we'll just hit OK. And then it's wrote the uh, MIDI information that we have here to the project uh, file that we'd be sending the person. So that's pretty good. That's what we want. Okay, so the last way of exporting this project we're going to look at is uh, by consolidating the tracks. And consolidating the tracks is a little different than the save as method because it doesn't keep, um, it will also generate a Reaper project, but it will not keep uh, takes or lanes. So if we did, if we were recording the same performance a few times, we had a couple takes of it. Uh, like so, whichever one you, you have selected is what it will export um, out of the DAW um, and it'll just get rid of the other one. Um, same thing with this MIDI synth, even if we went apply track or apply track or take effects to items as new take, whichever one we have selected is what it's going to export. So it'll either export the MIDI data or it'll export the audio data. So you'd want to explode these uh, across some new tracks because you're only going to get one piece of information exported per track. Um, so if we wanted both the MIDI data and the synthesizer, they need to be on separate tracks for this method. Um, it, it basically exports all of the data in its most raw form, no volume, no panning, no anything. Um, and it includes MIDI data for tracks that are just MIDI data. Um, so this is sometimes useful for maybe you just tracked uh, some drums or something and you're done editing them and everything. And uh, you just want to export, maybe you adjusted the levels uh, while you're listening to it just to make it easier for you to edit and you just want to send out those tracks that are all glued together to somebody but you don't want to have all your volume and stuff and your, and your panning applied. Uh, this is what you'd use that, uh, when you want to do something like that. So let's just uh, clean this up a bit. Get it back to where it was here. Okay, and then we're just going to export uh, this consolidated and we'll see what happens here. So um, you want entire project, tracks all. Um, the rest of the stuff is probably going to be fine. It'll also export a Reaper project for you, very much like the Save As one will. Um, and then so we just want to select our directory. And then open and process. And as you can see, it's loaded the, um, the new project file. And if we just go File, New Project, say we're not a Reaper user, and we want to take a look at that information what it would look like if you just uh, put it in your own DAW. You can ignore that, that was just the Reapeaks files that uh, it couldn't load there. We have the MIDI information and the two uh, raw, unaffected. One, two. Audio files, even though these have, uh, effects and volume applied. So it's gone, it's just, a, it's just exported just the raw information. So those are the three ways to export your project from Reaper, and between those three methods, you should be able to export uh, pretty much anything for anyone's requirements. So hopefully that was useful, and uh, you learned something, and yeah, if you have any questions, just let me know, and thanks for watching.